how are you? <laughs> I'm all right. Hanging in there. Hanging in yeah, there. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good. We're, we're, we're Hopefully, good. I get to talk to everybody in person soon one day. Uh, yeah, yeah. I miss that, you know? Fine. Good yeah, afternoon. Sorry to interrupt. We are now right. live. Uh, Sergeant, please start your recordings. You see, recording has started. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, Loud as well. Sorry, Chair Miller. Uh, Sergeant Leonardo, if you'd be able to start with your opening statement. Good afternoon and welcome to the New York City Council remote hearing on the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. At this time, we ask that all council members and staff turn on their video for verification purposes. To minimize disruption, please place cell phones and electronic devices to silent. Thank you for your cooperation. Mr. Chair, we are ready to begin. Thank you, Sergeant. Good afternoon. I'm Councilmember Isaac Nick Miller, Chair of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. And today we'll be voting on two pieces of legislation related to fast food employees. Proposed intro 1369A, sponsored by Councilmember Adams, would pro prohibit fast food employers from laying off employees without bona fide economic reasons, and would also require that fast food employers lay off employees in order of inverse seniority. Proposed intro 1415 sponsored by council member Brad Lander would prohibit fast food employees from laying off employees without reasonable cause related to performance and provide remedies of violation of this law. Today, these bills cre create just cause provisions for employees in the fast food industry, protecting these workers from arbitrary layoffs. U.S. labor law traditionally allows for two categories of employee determination. Termination with reasonable cause, also called just cause, and termination without cause, also referred to as at-will employee employment. New York State is an at-will employment state, which will allow employees to fire an employee for any reason other than on the basis of protected categories and status such as gender, race, religion, or age. Termination with just cause, on the other hand, requires employers to provide a reason for the firing of an employee. Recent reports from the fast food industry have demonstrated that job loss and drastic reduction in hours are common within the industry, which causes financial uncertainty and hardship for thousands of fast food workers that reside in New York City. A survey of 539 fast food workers released in 2019 found that half of all respondents had been fired, laid off, or compelled to leave due to intolerable working conditions. More than half of those who were surveyed were not given a reason for their termination, and nearly two-thirds of those who lost their job or had to or had reduced hours suffered from personal financial hardship as a result. The proposed legislation today would help protect these workers by acquiring fast food employers, requiring fast food employers to provide rational rationale for why employees are being laid off. Together, these bills would require one of the following for fast food layoffs to occur. The employee must have somehow failed to meet the duties of employment. Two there must be a bona fide economic rationale for the organization to reduce its workforce. Additionally, the two bills both create opportunities for a redress in the case of a violation of these laws. I'd like to thank my chief of staff, Mr. Ali Rasulanad, uh, my, my John Wani, uh, the senior staff uh, advisor, Joe Goldblum, and the committee uh, Newsat, Tom, John, Malcolm, and uh, we will now hear from the bill sponsors. And I know that Councilmember Brandon Lander has awaited this moment for quite some time. Take it away, Brad. Thank you very much, Chair Miller. It's a, an honor to be here, and I, you know, all the leadership that you have shown in uh, making New York City a better, fairer place for workers is really deeply appreciated. And I also want to uh, give credit to Councilmember Adams, who I don't see here at the moment, but has really been a, a partner and a champion um, with the fast food workers in in winning this day. Fast food workers have been on the front lines of this pandemic, serving their neighbors, working in tight quarters 
taking on new responsibilities for cleaning and sanitizing, and yet often unable to speak up about health and safety issues for fear that they could lose their jobs. I, I think we should all be able to agree that no one should be fired on a whim without a reason, without any notice. Um, but for years, that's been the norm in the fast food industry. Fast food workers, the majority of whom uh, are women of color, have fought hard to raise wages and demand workplace protections. And we owe it to them to end unfair firings that cause stress and uncertainty in their lives. Um, I do want to speak very briefly to some of the pushback we've been hearing from the industry. Because look, we all have deep sympathy for our neighborhood small businesses and including the restaurants that bring so much life to our neighborhoods and are facing such a devastatingly hard time during this pandemic. But I think it's important to point out a few things. First, this is only fast food chains uh, with stores, you know, 30 or more stores. This is not your neighborhood restaurant. <laughs> the bill doesn't go into effect for six months which is long after, pray to God, indoor dining will be restored. And let's be clear, fast food restaurants aren't making most of their money on indoor dining. Like that's not the Dunkin' Donuts business model. So um, drive through, pick up and delivery um, are a big piece of what they've been doing even in the pandemic. As the chair said, businesses can still fire employees for misconduct or for failure to perform work duties. You just have to give people feedback and have written and clear policies like every good employer uh, does. And layoffs for economic reasons are also still allowed. Um, they just need to be in order of seniority so that bosses can't lay people off arbitrarily and essentially do an unfair firing in the name of a layoff. Now, it's no surprise industry lobbyists are insisting that corporations should be able to fire people at any time with no reason. But I do think it's worth noting that the fast, main fast food companies have actually seen their share prices rise by an average of 20% in the last year. Um, collectively, they're worth $42.4 billion more than they were a year ago. They can afford to treat their workers with basic decency. Uh, in closing, um, it's important to note that this bill comes from the organizing of fast food workers and their courage in stepping up to organize in the work they did in the fight for 15, fighting for paid sick leave, for a fair work week that gives them a path to full-time jobs and a stable schedule. It is because of their courage and their organizing um, that these jobs, which were contingent poverty jobs a decade ago, um, are now jobs that people want to be able to keep. Uh, and that's why it's important to make sure that they can't be fired on a whim, that they can have the job security if they show up and do their job, that they can speak out if they need to, if they don't get PPE or there are rats in their store as there have been in the Bronx in the last two weeks. So uh, big credit to the workers and SEIU 32 BJ for uh, helping them organize. Uh, I'm thrilled we're on the cusp of giving these essential but long disrespected workers some job stability with this just cause legislation. I'm grateful to the to the chair uh, and to the members of this committee. Thank you. Chair Miller, it looks like you're on mute. Who said, do you have further instruction? I'm kind of waiting on council member Adams to log in. Uh, yes, we're reaching out to her right now. Okay. I think I just sent it. Send it to her. So in, in the interim, we've been joined by council members Drum, Lewis, Ulrich, Rosenthal, and Lander. I want to thank my colleagues uh, and members of the committee uh, for joining us. Um, this, as council member Lander indicated, this is a, uh, a uh, long ongoing process to get us here. And uh, there have been many folks uh, who, who really worked tirelessly on behalf of these workers. But more importantly, workers have really organized and, and worked on behalf of themselves and, and, 
and 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 this committee has always supported their right to to organize and 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 certainly to be able to bargain and where there is not that opportunity we want to be that ensure that we that workers are being treated with the dignity and honor that they deserve and and so i want to thank my colleagues for putting forth this legislation here for uh that really supports um those who have worked in the underbelly of the labor movement for so long and uh COVID 19 has really um brought the important work of fast food workers and other uh workers that have been marginalized um for so long uh to the forefront and i, I think uh this is something that they're really deserving of and excited to be a part of it. Now, uh, our new public safety chair has arrived. Uh, we will now hear from, uh, you know, we put you right to work. Wow. Council member Adrian Adams, and uh, thank you uh, for, for your advocacy. Thank you, my, my neighbor, for always being in my ear and reminding me how important this legislation is that uh, workers have the rights that they deserve. And, and so without further ado, uh, Council Member Adams, I'm gonna speak to your bill. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair, and my apologies for being late. It's been quite a day, um, quite a day. So I'd like to start by thanking Chair Miller for allowing me to deliver remarks about legislation that's so important to so many workers in our city. Introduction 1396 and the Just Cause legislative package as a whole. Fast food workers have been subjected to unfair work environments and have been the victims of unfair reduction of hours or arbitrary termination, causing them to live in a constant state of uncertainty, which is completely unacceptable. These employees are getting up before dawn or working overnight, commuting long hours to work, doing physically demanding work and missing meals with their families. In exchange, they're often faced with impossible choices, endure hostile working conditions, leave or be fired and face financial struggle without a job. Many of these families are already living paycheck to paycheck. Losing their jobs for no reason can have catastrophic effects. This is simply unacceptable. Just cause legislation is a chance for hardworking New Yorkers to finally have the peace of mind that comes with knowing that they will be treated with the dignity and respect that they deserve. I would like to thank my colleague and partner in this legislation package, Council Member Brad Lander and the workers of 32BJ for fighting the good fight. I encourage my colleagues to use your vote to say that workers cannot be seen as expendable. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Council Member Adams and Council Member Lander for this legislation. Um, does any of my colleagues uh, have anything to say? Anyone on the legislation before we call the vote? Okay, Mr. Clerk. Thank you. Good afternoon, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on civil service and labor. Introduction 1415A and 1396A. Both items are coupled. Chair Miller. 
I vote aye. Drum. Aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye. Adams. I vote aye. Lewis. I vote aye. Ulrich. I, I would like to explain my vote. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I can be excused, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, with all uh, respect and admiration for the uh, co-sponsors of the bills, um, I respectfully am voting no today. I was on a lengthy call this morning with the Chambers of Commerce who have expressed a number of reservations about how this will have a negative impact on uh, small businesses and restaurants um, throughout the city. And uh, I don't believe that the uh, final version of the bill satisfies a lot of the concerns that uh, the business community has expressed. Uh, we all want to support small businesses. We're very concerned, especially during the pandemic, how they have been impacted economically uh, by the restrictions and by the shutdowns. Uh, but uh, this just feels like another burden that's being placed upon small businesses and restaurants at a very, very difficult time. And for those reasons, I'll be voting no on both. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Alvarez. Okay, by vote of five in the affirmative, one in the negative and no abstentions. Both items have been adopted by the committee. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank my colleagues for, for participating this afternoon. It was it, it was late, unusual timing, but we're here. It is, it is that important. As Dr. King says, that all labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. And that is certainly the work that these men and women do on behalf so seamlessly on behalf of all of us so with that uh we call this meeting is now adjourned thank you you're quite welcome